Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are gonna look at the April Smart Art Box. You can find it at smartartbox.com. You get seven micron pens, a mechanical pencil and eraser, and three Touch 5 twin brush markers in different shades of gray, and a Canson mixed media pad. You'll also get a brochure that gives you some project ideas. The theme of the month is a manga art, so there's a little manga project for you to do. That doesn't really inspire me so much, so I thought I would do an animal instead, since it is something a little bit different than what I normally do. I started off with a tapered oval for the cow's face, and then I put kind of a blocky um, shape down for the snout. I put a line across to line up the ears, which are basic, just kind of like um, ovals, and I'm putting them on each side of the cow's head. I also um, can refine shapes now at this stage. Nothing is permanent when it's done in pencil. I'm putting in the nostrils, which are just kind of rounded shapes, and then a triangle there, and that's basically just a plane of shadow that I saw in my reference photo, which I've linked down below. I'm going ahead and putting a line across the, oh, just about the middle of the face where I'm gonna be lining up the eyes, and I'm making that kind of triangle shape just so I can make sure that I have everything lined up on each side of the face fairly equally. I'm sketching in the eyes and any sort of bone structure that I see on the cow's face. I don't wanna put in a ton of detail at this point, but I do wanna make sure what I put in is accurate. I'm just gonna go through and refine any other little shapes, and I don't erase at this point. I know I can erase after I've done all my inking, so the goal here is to get down the pencil and not worry about erasing, unless something is glaringly obvious and I think it might make me um, mess up later on down the line. Now I've switched over to my Sakura Micron pens and I'm using the eight nib and honestly the 08 size is my favorite size. I'm not real fussy sketcher. I don't use the smaller nibs that much and I'm just filling in my darkest areas. So this would be the irises of the eyes, the shadow under the eyelashes, the nostrils, any place I see a lot of really dark area. The really cool thing about the Micron pens is that um, I can use watercolor over them and they won't smudge and I could also use alcohol markers over them and they won't smudge. So they're a fantastic tool to to have in your art arsenal. I'm going through and putting in the darker details and shadows in the ears and under the kind of the mop of hair, fur that he has on the top of his head. And I'm also dotting in some little stippling lines. And that's gonna kind of give me the leathery texture of the snout. But I'm only using stippling there because quite frankly, I don't have the patience to stipple everywhere. I'm putting in the shadow under the face on the neck kind of chest area. And I'm doing a technique called cross hatching. And basically what that means is I'm making a series of lines going in one direction. And as soon as I filled in the entire area where I want this shadow, I'm gonna put a series of lines going in in opposite direction. So they're kinda, um, uh, they're not perpendicular, they don't make X's, they more make um, diamonds if you were to look at the little shapes in there rather than squares, if that makes sense. It's basically just a you know series of lines kind of crossing over each other. And then I'm refining um, the edges of the faces in any place that I want to have you know a more definite line before I switch into some smaller pens. So I like to go in with my darker colors first, my thicker nibs first, uh, just because I feel like it establishes the line weight and it helps me establish value. If I go in with tiny details first, sometimes I can completely miss the mark on the um, on everything that's really important. I miss the big stuff fussing with the details. So now I'm going in with a smaller pen. I think this is probably a 202. And I am just kind of putting in some little furry lines, the fur in the ears, the hair on the face. Anytime I just want a finer hint at texture, going in and adding detail around the snout. Again, I can do cross hatching here and it will be much finer and fainter. And I'm also putting in some kind of wiggly, broken lines to signify the fur that's in the uh, cow's body. I can go in and add some more of those wiggly furry shapes in the neck shadows too, just to give it a little more texture. Now I've switched over to the warm um, Touch 5 twin brush marker, and this is a warm three, I believe, so it's not super, super dark. And basically I'm just trying to establish some warm shadows. I'm trying to uh, kind of tone the animal, give it some local color, and increase depth in the areas where I feel like there would be a little bit of shadow in the sunlit area of the cow. And if you check out the link that I left in the video description, you can see the photo that I'm working from and see what I mean about sunlit areas versus shadow areas. So I'm going ahead and toning any of my um, mid-range color that's not completely washed out by the sun. And I'm even going in with the chisel edge because this is a little bit quicker this way, and I'm filling in the shadow 
shadow on the neck and also toning a lot of the body here. I'm not being too fussy about getting it perfect. I just kind of want to get that color in there so that I have some kind of local color underneath the uh, next shadow color that I'm going to use. And this is a blue gray number five and it's a little bit darker than the warm gray number three but the more important distinction is that it has cooler undertones. So the shadows that I do with this marker are going to look deeper. They're going to look cooler. They're going to look um, more recessed and it's a great way to kind of marry the values of the black micron pen that I was using at first and the um, warm shadows that I put in. So now I've switched to my darkest gray and this is the um, blue gray 7 so it's a couple degrees darker than the last one I used and I'm putting in the extremely dark shadows like the cool shadow on the cow's neck. I'm also adding in some kind of marks for texture because I didn't want it to have a really really hard shadow because a cow is soft. It's This one's very furry so I want it to kind of have some of that texture and that's what I'm trying to achieve with the different grays. And now I've gone in with my warm gray again, and what I'm doing here is I'm just, um, again, adding some more mid-tone because I felt like the face was way too light after I put that shadow in. But I can also blend out and um, kind of diffuse the intensity of the uh, darker gray there, the darker, cooler gray I was using. And also I'm adding some texture just by adding those squiggly lines. Once they dry, they're going to blend in a little bit more, but I'm taking the full potential of these three markers and seeing what I can do with them because I typically will use many more markers and I typically don't use gray, so this is a very exciting challenge for me. Now I'm going in with a small micron pen and I'm adding little furry details that I didn't put to begin with because sometimes when you're looking at that white paper, you don't want to put in a lot of details. It seems a little bit much. And now finally, I'm using an eraser to remove my pencil line and there we have it. That is the finished pen and ink drawing. But of course, I like color and I thought it'd be fun to kind of mix it up with some of the supplies I already had. And you can use previous smart art boxes for this and you're going to be super excited about the next one because I just got it and I can't tell you what it is, but it is amazing. You'll have to stay tuned for a video on that. I'm using watercolors in shades of yellow ochre, sepia, and burnt sienna to tone my animal. So the cool thing about this is we did all this work with shading with our markers, right? So now really all we have to do is put a wash of color over and it just kind of comes to life. It's kind of like tinting a photo. You know how they used to tint old black and white photos? Well, you had all your values there. All you had to do is add a little, little pink in the cheeks, a little blue in the eyes, and you had a colored photo. Well, it's the same idea here. When you have a grayscale underpainting, painting the color on top is a breeze. I also didn't like the uh, big, vast white background, and I thought it'd be nice to have kind of like a pasture, kind of soft focus, green, shades of green background there. So I'm simply using water to put quite a bit of water on this mixed media paper. I'm very, very pleased in how this held up, and I've been meaning to try this paper for a long time, so I was really excited that it came in my kit. And I'm just adding some different colors here, and I got a little carried away with the blue and I put too much on, so in a rush to spread it around, I actually ended up really Really liking what happened. I put a little extra water up top and you can kind of see it happening now, the water pushing the pigment and kind of giving me the look of clouds above the tree line in the background. Since it's soft and out of focus, I don't have to worry about it being perfect. The fuzzier the better and it's just going to make my cow look sharper and more um, as a focal point and that's really what I want here. So after it was dry, I grabbed my pastel pencils and that's a supply I don't use very often so I love to kind of dig out the things I don't use that much and I'm using shades of cream, white, and um, kind of like gold golden ochre colors to highlight the hairs in the ears, highlight the fur, um, any, anywhere I feel like I need a little bit more sharpness and a little bit more highlight because I did lose a lot of my lights when I was going in with the watercolors. I'm adding highlights on the nose so it looks a little more leathery and shiny and that little bit of white fur that I completely lost when I was sketching. I love how adding a media like this just adds so much more depth to the painting and brings it more in focus and I have to say I just think this cow is adorable and I absolutely love the way he turned out. But what do you think? Do you think that the black and white version was better and I should have left it alone or do you like the color more? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you want to try this service for yourself, the Smart Art Box monthly boxes, you can go to smartartbox.com and you can order your surprise box or you can order this one or any of the past boxes that are still available. That way you can know what you're going to get or you can be surprised. Completely up to you. And there you can see the colored and the black and white one again. And they were just so much fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, please give me a thumbs up if you did. Until next time, happy crafting.